In the tech industry, the launch of a new product always feels like playing a new symphony for the market. This time, the yet-to-be-officially unveiled Huawei Mate 60 Pro has created a sensation in the industry, akin to the climax of a musical composition, becoming the center of attention for many tech enthusiasts and industry professionals. Such a marketing strategy undeniably leaves people with a lot of room for speculation, and many have their own theories. At this moment, Huawei seems to have placed itself back in the spotlight, becoming the core of attention on social media, various forums, and even traditional media outlets. Everything about the Huawei Mate 60 Pro has become a hot topic in online discussions and social circles. In just a few days, iPhone 15 is set to be released, while the Huawei Mate 60 Pro is already available through all channels. Today marks Huawei's strong comeback, after a three-year hiatus, directly challenging Apple once again. Before the iPhone 15 series has even been released, Huawei has already made its move, causing a major stir in the smartphone industry. However, everyone knows that the return of the Kirin 9000S chip, confirmed by numerous bloggers and reviewers, is the most critical aspect of this competition. Why do we say that? Today, I will share with you all the details, so let's get started. Firstly, let's take a look at just how big the gap is between the Kirin 9000S and Apple's A17. Let's start by discussing the key specifications that have been exposed for the Kirin 9000S chip. It features an 8-core, 12-thread design with hyperthreading. The manufacturing process and foundry information are unknown, and whether it supports 5G is also uncertain. However, network speed tests have shown it can achieve 5G speeds. The CPU configuration includes one 2.62 GHz large core, three 2.15 GHz big cores, and four 1.53 GHz small cores, totaling 8 cores. It is rumored to incorporate hyperthreading technology typically found in computer CPUs and integrates the Maliun 910 GPU, which is a new introduction. On the other hand, the A17 chip from Apple uses a combination of six GPU cores and six CPU cores, manufactured on TSMC's 3 nanometers process. Its high-performance core has a clock speed of up to 3.70 GHz, compared to the A16. The A17 has achieved a 31% single-core improvement and a 24% multi-core improvement, resulting in significantly enhanced performance. Now that we've looked at the specifications, let's directly compare the CPU performance, as data speaks for itself. The Kirin 9000S scores 1,003 points in single-core performance, and 4,188 points in multi-core performance. In comparison, the Kirin 9000 scores 1046 points in single-core and 3700 points in multi-core performance. It is similar to the Snapdragon 888, which scores around 1125 points in single-core and 3679 points in multi-core performance. Taking a look at Apple's A17 chip, it's rumored to score 3986 points in single-core and 8841 points in multi-core performance. However, this score seems unusually high, and its authenticity is unknown. Comparing it with the A16, the A16 scores 1887 in single-core and 5455 in multi-core performance. Based solely on CPU benchmark scores, the Kirin 9000S does appear to lag behind by about four generations compared to the A17. However, it's essential to consider factors like the smoothness of the Harmony OS operating system and the fact that current CPUs often have surplus performance, which may not result in significant differences in real-world usage. For those who have actually experienced this phone, there are undoubtedly complex emotions at play, with at least two deeply intertwined sentiments. The first emotion is undoubtedly the empathy for Huawei. Since 2020, Huawei has faced unprecedented challenges. Former partners, influenced by external pressures, chose to go their separate ways from Huawei. However, Huawei didn't choose to give up, instead, it persevered and aimed to deliver better products to the market and consumers. During this period, it can be said that Huawei has weathered numerous storms. Every decision, every breakthrough, seems like Huawei's way of proving its worth to the market. Three years might not seem long for a company, but for an industry leader, the upheavals experienced during these three years may surpass what other companies go through in a decade or even several decades. The second emotion is related to the physical characteristics of this phone. While the Huawei Mate 60 Pro offers an excellent tactile experience, its relatively heavy weight can be burdensome for users. Especially for those accustomed to lightweight phones, this device might feel somewhat heavy and uncomfortable during extended use. 
the Yarden Black variant of the Huawei Mate 60 Pro weighs 228 grams, and when you add the weight of a phone case, it becomes even more substantial. For many users, adapting to this weight may take some time. However, from another perspective, this weight is intended to provide users with more powerful performance, a larger battery capacity, and a superior overall experience. In comparison, the Huawei Mate 40 Pro seems to strike a more reasonable balance between size and weight. This has left many users questioning the design choices for the Mate 60 Pro. Why did Huawei make these adjustments in this generation of products? Is it for the pursuit of greater performance, or are there other considerations at play? Additionally, there's a minor detail that has caught users' attention. Certain features that were previously beloved by users seem to have been removed in the Huawei Mate 60 Pro. For instance, the double tap volume adjustment feature from previous versions is absent in this design, requiring users to adapt to a new way of adjusting the volume. This change, for users accustomed to the old feature, is undoubtedly a small disappointment. Furthermore, in terms of camera performance, the Mate 60 Pro doesn't seem to have made significant strides. While it performs reasonably well in photography, it doesn't exhibit significant differences compared to the Mate 40 Pro. Additionally, there have been some issues in the camera department when importing footage into editing software on a computer, which has also become a point of concern for users. In the face of these complex emotions, there is often hesitation when individuals have to make a choice. These days, on the Chinese internet, a topic gained traction, if you don't consider the price, which would you choose between the iPhone 15 and the Mate 60, given their similar release times? This topic became a hot search trend for a while. Of course, for tech enthusiasts, we should return to the topic of chips. The Kirin 9000S is not an unfamiliar name. Three years ago, Huawei first used this chip in its Mate 40 Pro smartphone and it garnered widespread attention for its robust performance and advanced 5 nanometer manufacturing process. Looking back at history, when the Kirin 9000S was first introduced, it was the industry focus. This chip employed the cutting-edge 5 nanometer manufacturing process at the time, which meant it could integrate more circuits within a given area, delivering higher computational power. Huawei, as the developer and producer of this chip, undoubtedly demonstrated its leadership in chip technology. But the question arises, why is Huawei using this chip again three years later, especially in the current technological and market landscape? Firstly, based on some Teardown experts' findings, we can see that the chip in the Huawei Mate 60 Pro indeed bears the high silicon marking, signifying a close connection with Huawei. Another crucial piece of information is the CN marking, indicating that the chip was manufactured in mainland China. These two pieces of information point us in a clear direction. The chip used in the Huawei Mate 60 Pro is both associated with Huawei and produced in mainland China. Some believe that Huawei has mastered the technology to produce 5 nanometer chips, suggesting that Huawei has achieved another breakthrough in chip technology. Others speculate that it could be another domestic chip manufacturer, such as SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, that has acquired the technology to produce 5 nanometer chips. In Teardown videos, I noticed a label with 2035 CN. That CN in this label is clear, representing that the chip was manufactured in China. However, the number 2035 left me pondering. If we interpret it conventionally, this number could signify the 35th week of 2020, meaning these chips were produced around that time. Interestingly, this time frame coincides with the period when TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, faced sanctions. Therefore, I personally speculate that these chips might have been purchased by Huawei from TSMC after learning about the impending sanctions. However, this is just my personal speculation and may not be entirely accurate. So, on the internet, there are various speculations regarding who actually manufactured the Huawei Kirin 9000S chip. Let's take a look at some of these speculations and patiently await an official announcement. Firstly, some believe that the Kirin 9000S might be a product of post-processing on the original Kirin 9000 chip. The basis for this claim is that both the Kirin 9000S and Kirin 9000 are manufactured using the 5 nanometers process, and feature CPU cores based on the A77 architecture and GPU cores based on the G78 architecture. However, this assertion seems somewhat implausible because the Kirin 9000S differs from the Kirin 9000 in various aspects 
including a reduction in CPU cores, GPU cores, NPU cores, ISP cores, and a noticeable increase in chip size. These changes would be unlikely if it were merely post-processed. Secondly, some speculate that the Kirin 9000S might have been manufactured by TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. This hypothesis is grounded in the fact that TSMC is currently the only foundry capable of providing the 5 nanometers manufacturing process, and Huawei was once a significant customer of TSMC. However, this speculation also seems improbable, as US sanctions against Huawei prohibit TSMC from continuing to produce chips for Huawei, unless granted permission by the US government. There are currently no indications that the US government will relax its sanctions against Huawei. Lastly, some suggest that the Kirin 9000S may have been produced by SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, often referred to as China's largest semiconductor foundry. Although SMIC has been impacted by US sanctions, it is unlikely as well, as SMIC's most advanced process technology only reaches the 14 nanometers level and falls far short of the 5 nanometers requirement. Furthermore, there have been no public announcements of any collaboration between SMIC and Huawei. Next, some people believe that the Kirin 9000S was manufactured by other domestic semiconductor foundries. The basis for this claim is that China has several smaller but technologically advanced foundries, such as Unisoc, Yangtze Memory Technologies, and Huahong Semiconductor, among others. While these foundries have also been affected by US sanctions, they might have found ways to circumvent or obtain exemptions from the sanctions. This possibility exists but it also depends on whether these foundries have the capacity and resources to meet Huawei's requirements. Finally, some suggest that the Kirin 9000S might have been manufactured by foundries that are part of Huawei's own co-build efforts, or its independent initiatives. The basis for this claim is that when faced with US sanctions, Huawei did not abandon its chip development and production plans but actively sought partnerships with other companies, or initiated the construction of its own foundries to address the issue. For example, Huawei collaborated with the Shanghai Municipal Government to establish Shanghai Huaqi Microelectronics Company, Limited, SMIC Shanghai, and there have been rumors that Huawei has been building its own foundry in Wuhan. This possibility also exists, but it depends on whether these foundries can achieve a breakthrough in 5 nanometers technology and ramp up production within a short time frame. In summary, the identity of the manufacturer for the Kirin 9000S remains a mystery. We can only speculate based on clues and analysis, but we should not fully trust any one assertion. The truth about the Kirin 9000S will only be revealed with time and by Huawei itself. Let's wait and see. That's it for today's discussion, see you in the next episode.